dear ones, welcome to Touch by the Lord, a program that will build your faith, hope, and trust in the Lord. We are so grateful to the Most High God for our lives. He holds our life in his hands. So anytime you have the privilege of seeing the next day, please don't hesitate to give him thanks for your life because many people did not have it like what you have. Our quote for today says, loving the Lord genuinely is the best decision you will make in order to reap all the benefits that comes with our love for him. Love is so strong that it can penetrate through a thick wall. Why? Because our Lord Jesus demonstrated his love on the cross for you and I. So love is the most important thing. But our love for the Lord will give us so many benefits. Love the Lord and reap all the benefits that comes with it. Today, I am so excited that we have someone all the way from Virginia to, to share his life journey with us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Please like our Facebook and Instagram pages. Share to friends and families. You will never be the same. Today, I'm blessed to introduce to you the apostle of the Most High God, doing God's work vibrantly all the way from Virginia to share his life story with us. He's written a book called Church Folk. At the end of our conversation, he will talk a little bit about his book. So stay tuned, relax, don't go anywhere, you'll be blessed. His name is Apostle Dr. Leonard Quentin Sampson. Hello, Apostle. God bless you. How are you, woman of God? God bless you. I'm, I'm doing well by grace. God bless you so much. Amen. Please take some time to int introduce yourself and what you do for the Lord. God bless Amen. you. My name is uh, Apostle Dr. Leonard Sampson. I am the senior pastor of One Faith Unified Body of Christ Church here in Warsaw, Virginia. Mm. Uh, I am also the presiding mm. prelate of the Churches of the Body of Christ, where God has allowed wow. me to have oversight of some wonderful, phenomenal leaders. So I am pleased wow. and overjoyed to be with you on this morning. Yeah, I'm also very happy to meet you. Amen. Doctor, please, can you share your childhood a little bit of it with us before you met the Lord? Amen. Well, Amen. I was I was born uh, the first of the first. Uh, uh, my father was the first son in his generation, uh, wow. and I wow. was the first of my generation having no older brothers wow. or sisters, wow. no older cousins. I was number one. Uh, wow. So wow! I like to believe the Lord set me up for leadership. Mm. Mm. Um, True. But in that, um, born the oldest of four children. Um, mm. I was born and raised in the church. Uh, we mm. were indoctrinated in the Church of God in Christ. And uh, wow. I grew up Kojic. Um, I had experience also growing up in the Baptist church. So uh, yeah. church was a very foundation of mine from, from childhood. Mm. Um, but mm. like most other people, uh, I, I, well, yeah. probably unlike most people or other pastors, I'm kind of glad to be able to report. I'm not one that says, well, I was born in the church. I taught my first message at 13 and I've been running for God my entire life mm. uh, because that's mm. not my story. Um, mm. I was born in the church. I 
had my own mm. path, my own way. Uh, yeah. in, in my adult life, I had been in and out of church. Uh, as a teen, I'd done more than the, than the law would allow. Um, but mm-hmm. um, everything that I went through was a lesson for now was the foundation yeah. of a ministry that people see as very powerful. Uh, I, I'm led wow. to not believe that one can have a powerful ministry without having, uh, as you asked me about, such a robust True. of experiences through childhood. So True. You know, I, I dealt with a whole lot of things. Uh, I went um, I, I went to the military. I experienced a lot of things. Um, and and, and mm. just say a lot of things that were not God. And these, again, were the foundations that brought me back. But, of course, having the root in the church is what drew me exactly back. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's normal for young people, whether you were born in the church, to veer off a bit, like you said earlier. It's all for a purpose. But, you know, for the purposes of someone watching us and living a kind of life, sharing a bit of what you went through with them would, would give them a hope. Did you get it? Amen. Well, yes. I, I, yes. I can tell you, um, mm. it, it's something that became apparent to me uh, some years back in the yeah. ministry mm. uh, of, the, mm. of the true nature of generational curses. Mm. Yeah, and, yeah, and true. How we are attacked at childhood, and and true. we always true. use the uh, onus of thought that a child's mind is like a sponge, and mm. they absorb mm. everything they see. And that's true. It, it, the importance of understanding that one, I was born and raised in the church, mm. also spawns mm. another issue: is that. Many times, just because we're in church doesn't mean we're in Christ. So when sometimes your parents are in church and they're acting one way in church and then they go home and act a total different way, these are things that generationally curse you and you start to repeat these things throughout your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So um, generational curses that were tied to me were uh, uh, abuse, marital abuse, Uh, mm. things like uh, 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 verbal abuse, physical yeah. abuse, uh, yeah. slothfulness, uh, uh, un- in a, in a ability to be a good steward. So a lot of these things plagued me for a long time in my life till I realized that many times the things that we go through in life, they spawn yeah. back to our childhood and what we That's saw in the true. home. And we saw them as acceptable behavior because nobody corrected it. Yeah. So I, I went through life repeating a lot of these things um, and, and dealing with a lot of them. And, and I tell people that it took, a, it took God to pr- drag me out of these curses. Yeah. And so yeah. one of the things that we're very fundamental about in the church is yeah. saying, uh, Proverbs 22 and 6, raise up a child in the way he should go. And when he grows old, he won't yes. depart from it. Yes, he will not depart from exactly. it. Exactly. And we, we look at that as if it's a commandment, but it's a principle of fact. It's and it. what we don't understand is it's not church that's driving who we are as children. It's what we see mm-hmm. outside of church that's cursing that's us. True. And that's these true. are the things that's hard for us to walk away from. So, so the lying, the, the sinfulness, all the sins that we, yeah. we learn as children, we don't mm-hmm. depart from them because they're so indoctrinated in us. That's and true. we feel that it was church, but it was everything else. Yeah, true. That, that's, that's awesome. Did, did the abuses leave any bitterness in you before you gave it, your life to Christ? It, it did manifest in, in my yeah. first and second marriages um, wow. on, my, on my path to Christ. And, and again, mm. the, the problem is, and, and I, will, I will be very honest with you, 
the thing happens that when you're a child, you can you can think that you are not wanting to be like something, but because you were generationally cursed by it, that's true. You adopted it's automatically in you. So when it matters, that, that's very true. You, you're 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 hearing people all your life saying, "Well, you're just like your father. You're just like your mother." You yeah, just, yeah. Just think we denounce yeah. and say, "No, I'm nothing like them." But that's it is it. so far in us, and we can't depart from it because we can't be honest about it and being there. So until yeah. it physically manifests, and you say to yourself, "Well, what's wrong with me? How is mm. these things happening?" And then and then it takes God to cause you to realize that. Wait mm. a minute. These are things that you have been attacked by. These are yeah. things that are now manifesting in your life that you didn't even know were there. So they lie dormant until the opportunity arises for you to mm. understand that they are actually there. Mm. And then they're hard That's to true. put away after you do find out. <laughs> That's true. You, you're very right. So amidst all that pain, you, you surrender your life to Christ. Yes. And when you did, how were you able to come out of the bitterness? Well, it took time. And mm. and that's one thing sometimes we don't want to appreciate. We yeah. sometimes we want to believe we came to Christ and was instantly changed and we start running the race. Um but it it took that process of now coming to God first. Mm. And then doing the second part of what he says, after you come, now learn of me. Mm. So what I had to understand was, and it took a, a variant of years for this to happen, was mm. that now that I came to God, I had to start to unlearn everything that I knew and start That's to learn true. everything I need to know. That's awesome. Did you straight away go into your calling or... Something else happened before you went to full time. Uh, no, my calling did not manifest right away. Um, okay. In in my um, in my time in church in my adult life, uh, I served in a lot of different areas. Uh, I served as a sound person doing audio. Uh, I served uh, driving the church van. I served. Uh, playing instruments. I was a drummer. Uh, so oh, I, okay. I, I did various things. Various and, things. Uh, I cleaned the church. And, and, and so a lot oh, of wow. things, uh, amen, a lot of things I did uh, mm. would, were what we call by pew sitters. And, and it's something yeah. I don't believe in at this point because I understand that mm. everything done in the house of God is a ministry in itself. Yeah, it is. And um, but what, but what I came to understand is that God was showing me foundational things of how to upkeep mm. his house. Mm. Because That's one of the true. things I found out very quickly as a pastor, you need to know how mm -hmm. to do all these things before you can pass That's them off true. to somebody else. <laughs> That's very true. So That's very um, true. for a long time, uh, I ran from my calling uh, it, and not really knowing what it was. But it started to manifest itself because one of the issues I, I had from childhood was a place of embarrassment of public speaking. So wow. I, I did not want to speak public. I didn't want to be up in front of people. And mm -hmm. I, I have a very shy awareness from that. And this is something that happened from childhood, uh, from a childhood mm. experience. You know, when you are verbally abused when you are a kid, mm -hmm. it, it leaves something behind your yes. thoughts it doesn't give you the boldness to speak yes. publicly yeah and but we thank god for the grace absolutely yeah and so yeah. i uh god used the military to bring mm. that out of me and one wow. of my promotion schemes was i became an instructor in the military oh and wow first, yes in the first class i ever taught i crashed and burned tremendously because I, wow. I, in front of people, I stood and I froze and yeah. I couldn't convey thoughts. And, <laughs> and it, it, it really, it was, it was a bad thing. You froze? I, I, I was just, <laughs> it, it, was, <laughs> it was unbelievable. And wow. So, uh, um, over time, 
God allowed me to it, through yeah. one of my superiors. Yeah. He sat down mm. and had a talk with me. And yeah. after that talk, I started to practice more into uh, yeah. uh, having a stance of, of boldness. And, and so wow. he took that and transcended it into mm. the home. Mm. Viewers, you have been listening to the story of our dear Apostle Dr. Leonard Quentin Sampson. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You have been listening to the life story of our dear Apostle Dr. Leonard Quentin Sampson, all the way from Virginia. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share to bless families, friends, and loved ones. Please like our Facebook and Instagram pages. I'd like to say thank you to Red Cotton for my beautiful costume. Apostle, before we went on the break, we're talking about how you went into the military and God used that to help you with speaking to the public because yes. they made you an, an instructor, is that right? Or a commander? Correct. Correct. An instructor. And then you froze. Yes. <laughs> Before God helped you out with, with, with your boss's counseling. Yes. Yes. Yes, please, let's continue from there. Well, well um, again, I, I, it, yeah. it's been funny in my mind uh, looking at myself yeah. on that day mm. and mm. Um, looking at myself now. And mm. it, it, it definitely becomes a testament of how God yeah. uses things throughout yeah. our lives to That's set us true. up for what we don't know is coming. That's true. And um, it's, it's interesting. I'm able to now at this point of my life uh, give counsel to people who come yeah. into the ministry who yeah. say they, they'll, I have some of my ministers at the church ask me or even some of the uh, mm. bishops or uh, uh, other leaders that I, I serve as a prelate. And they say, well, how do you feel so comfortable? You look so natural doing what you do. Uh, yeah. uh, how is it that you just seem unbroken, uh, regardless to what's going on around you? And I mm. say, well, um, one, I've learned how to get out the way and let the Holy Ghost operate. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's the best. Exactly. And so yeah. when he's speaking, I'm being quiet. When he's done, that's I'm it. done. And, That's it. Uh, and, and so now I'm able to counsel them to the understanding that, look, yeah. when you get up in front of people, regardless of how bold you are, how good you are at, at proclamating God's word, the butterflies yeah. are still there in your stomach. You have to deal with it. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's one of the hardest things to contend with yeah. is that, you know, people feel that you just get up before the people and, you know, mm -hmm. you're prepared, you just go at it. But mm -hmm. there's always those butterflies if you're talking with your with your congregation, whether you're yeah. talking to somebody else's congregation, yeah. there's always that little bit of nervousness that exists. Yeah. But this is where that mm -hmm. human weakness that's in us, mm -hmm. God allows mm -hmm. to have his glory and become strong mm -hmm. in us. That's true. Um, how is it like doing full-time ministry? Well, it's 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 very challenging. Um, mm. in, in fact, uh, I, I don't look at full time ministry in scope like many people do. I still hold a job. Mm. Uh, I still hold oh, a full time okay. job. You hold yeah. a full time job. I yet hold a full time job. How do you blend the two? Well, um, what what what? It's it's interesting. Um, I asked God one day, in fact. And I told God, I said, you know, God, it would be so much easier if you would just mm -hmm. allow me to just work for you and have to work for nobody else mm -hmm. and, and just be in full-time ministry. And God said to me, you're already in full-time ministry. 
Wow. Look around you. Look at the people who need me. Look at the people you're around every day that mm. you that your life can minister to. And mm. what he started to show me was that where we look at full-time ministry is the comfort of the four walls and just serving here. That's we have true. to be out there to be able to minister mm. to bring people here. <laughs> That's and, it. And so a great number of our membership are those mm. that uh, came through the network of my job. Wow. So uh, um, what, what I came to understand is that uh, full-time ministry is the challenge of one's life, not necessarily yeah. the absence of one's job. Yeah. And, and so um, uh, my job provides a very healthy ability to uh, sow not, even, not just into my local ministry, but also yeah. into my jurisdictional ministry and into the leaders. And, yeah. and so I'm a very big proponent of, of sewing. I'm a, I'm a sower, is what I do. Wow, so, that's good. Uh, I sow into the people of God. I sow into the leaders I serve. Uh, wow. And, and I believe in kingdom building through sowing, but not in the scope of looking to build prosperity. Uh, it's just the sense of who I am. And, and yeah. I just want to yeah. give all that I can to God the way mm. I did when I was mm. in the world. That's it. And that's very good. Someone is watching us. They are in, I can say, secular job, want, wanting to shift to ministry. As they are contemplating, they just want to leave their post and, and, and just go straight into full-time ministry. What will be your advice for such a person? My advice to such a person is um, the same advice I give to those in my fellowship as leaders, is that you can never depend solely on doing God's work on the backs of his people. Um, sometimes mm. wow. understanding how to be the first fruit of ministry means also how to be mm. first fruit to it financially. Uh, you, you can't believe that somebody will see the necessary need to sow into your ministry when you don't have anything to sow into mm. it. Um, so I, I, I'm, a, I'm a type of one that believes that um, God can allow us to transition ourselves, even in the absence of mm. a job, to still have financial fruit to feed into his house. Uh, like, wow. for instance, I have I have a military check that comes in for the rest of my life that I probably could live pretty comfortably on it if I didn't have the yeah. ministry. Uh, but wow. since I do have the ministry, I still maintain a job. And together, I'm able to just, one, take care of my household, but then also take care of God's mm -hmm. house if there was no people oh, here. Sure. So, so therefore, mm -hmm. we, must, we must put situations in perspective mm. to say that what people bring into the house of God should be the extra, should be the overflow. Mm. And, and sometimes, as you just said earlier, we can rush yeah. right into that because the overall onus is that, oh, just start a ministry and God in the ministry will take care of yeah. you. But yeah. I, if, if I could just give you this small parable, one who mm. plants a tree for shade in his yard doesn't get shade yeah. just because he planted the tree. There's yeah. years of watering and pampering and growing That's before true. that tree ever breaks root. Before That's as true. it grows, it still has to be maintained years before it can ever provide the shade yeah. that it was planted for. Yeah. So I'm one of the thought that there's nothing wrong with a ministry growing to the place to where it can take care of itself and its assets. Mm. But it has to grow to that. Mm. It's not something that immediately happens just because you open the doors. Mm. That's that's awesome. You know, this month for us here at TBL TV, we are dedicating the entire tune for fathers. You are a great apostle, doing so many things for the Lord. You are a father. How do you blend all these with your ministry? Well, I have one word for you. Balance. Mm. And Balance. 
Every, everything calls for proper balance. Um, it's yeah. as if you look at a juggler. He may have mm. a lot of balls, but he knows yeah. how to juggle them and keep them all in a rotation. Yeah. Every 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 last ball at one point is in the air while one is being touched, and the rotation continues. Mm. Mm. And so, with that balance. Mm. This also calls for a mindset of understanding that everything mm. that we do, every ball that we touch is a ministry in itself. So sometimes mm. as preachers or leaders, we get into the scope of thought and we get tunnel visioned to say, well, mm. I'm doing the work of the ministry. So I got to always be at the church. I always got to be at the church event. I always got to be yes, doing yes. this, for the, doing that. But mm. Everything has to have a time and a place. And so oh, sure. when you understand that, you understand that this is just a portion of my ministry. Being a father yeah. is its own ministry. Being a husband is That's its true. own ministry. Being an employee mm. is its own ministry. So every mm. aspect of my life has to give God glory because it's its own ministry. So to do the complete work mm. of the ministry means I have to be able to ministry, mm. minister in all these separate areas. Mm. Awesome. You know what I love about what you said? You said every part of it is, is ministry in itself. So being a husband is a ministry and being a father is also a ministry. I ask that question because, you know, ministry work can be a bit overwhelming. And so many people don't get the balance. Someone is watching us doing any kind of work and it's a husband and a father. What advice will you give to the person in just 30 seconds? You have to understand the word of God. Every mm. place that is a ministry, there's order given by the word of God. The word teaches uh, the husband to love his husband, love his wife like the church. He's he's given yeah. the commandment to teach and teach the kids to honor God. Yeah. He's given the he's given the commandment to operate as an employee without having to be looked over. So mm -hmm. all the areas of ministry are given commandments by God how to do them. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, now we are coming to talk about church folk. Amen. Church Folk is a book that you've written, and it's, it's interesting. Can you walk us through what inspired you to write that book, Church Folk? Yes, I can. Um, I, I wrote this book at what would seem as a very dark hour in my life. And... Mm -hmm. Um, I had found myself in a place um, mm. a little bit after I had started pastoring uh, some, mm. some years ago and a situation from some time before that came back and blew up in my face and I found wow. myself behind bars and mm. it seemed as if behind entire, bars? Yes, yes. Wow. And it seemed as if the entire church at large had turned its back on me. And wow. uh, I, I remember my father and mother in the faith coming to visit me and they said, son, this wow. changes nothing. And my mother in the faith said yeah. something to me that I will never forget. She said, son, all the apostles mm -hmm. were in jail at one point mm -hmm. in time. And I, and I thought to myself, I said, wow, that's, that's an interesting thought. But mm. I dedicated my entire time uh, to mm. uh, focusing on God's word. Day in, day out is all I did. It was, it was everything to me. And this book uh, came up in my spirit to write. Wow. And what I didn't know was that it was going to be, and, and as I look at it now, it, being asked this question, mm. it became a mm. very life scope of my thought of the church from an array of different vantage points. 
Uh, so I was able That's to speak true. as one, once not having been a believer and what I thought about the church at that mm. point, uh, yeah. I, I, I knew what it was to be hurt by leaders. I knew what it was to hurt people mm. as a leader. Um, I, I, mm. I had so many, what, what I was shown was that God had given me such a collection of different dynamics that I could speak to, yeah. to, and, and as this book says uh, in, its def, in its description, it brings judgment right to the church's front door. It's a, it's a book mm -hmm. to where we can all see ourselves in at one place of time, regardless of where yeah. we are in our walk. And some yeah. places uh, in that book that we find ourselves are hard to accept. Yeah. But when we take a very good look at ourselves and accept where we are and, and knowing that God says we can come to him from wherever we are, then we can That's get true. to a place of better once we're willing to be uh, honest about where we are. So it, it was very, uh, it was a very hard book to write, believe it or not. Um, wow. Many days I wrote the whole book in hand manuscript and it had to be typed up. But many days I yeah. wrote uh, that book in tears. Uh, many times I oh. wrote in frustration. Um, and, and many times I, 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 I wrote in an array of different um, emotions. But one thing that I believe totally is in every one of those emotions, in every one of those days, in every one of those tears, God was... Mm -hmm guiding the pen yeah yeah thank god the word of god says whether we walk through the fire or the water he's there with us so when you were in prison he was with you did your going to the prison gave you the strength to do what you're doing today um I want to say it did. I want to say it did. Um, because again, it for me was a, it, it was a comeback. Um, because again, mm -hmm. this was not something that I did in the commission of preaching. Yeah. It's something yeah. that from a former life came back and reached out and yeah. grabbed me and yeah. stripped me from the pulpit, stripped me from my church, stripped me from everything mm -hmm. I had. And it brought me down to ground zero to where there was no mm. place to put up. And so it, it, it centered me. It, I mm. think it became the final building block in yeah. a testimony of, of, uh, of life. And it gave me a solid foundation. It gave me that ability to have an acceptance of people regardless to where they are. Um, some people, some pastors don't have that ability to be yeah. able to be forthcoming or be able to understand people where they are, because mm -hmm. again, yeah. they've had that, that, uh, testimony. They taught their first sermon at 13. They've been running mm -hmm. for God all their life. They ain't never did nothing wrong. So yeah. they don't know how to accept people who are in a bad place. They're That's not true. able to, as Christ did, look out over multitude of people and have compassion mm -hmm because they're judgmental. So it yeah. centered me yeah. in that way of being able to be acceptant to people having issues, to people having problems and have beaten themselves up and don't need to be beat up anymore. <laughs> mm, that's true. You know, Christ paid for all that we had to go through. And there's one thing I've realized that most of the time, Church folks will leave you when you fall and continue. So the, I, I pray that this book will help many people. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting book, and I know God will use it to bless people. But someone is watching us. They are having the experience that you had because it ripped you of everything because of what you, you had done in the past. And today you are here. What, what are you going to tell the person in, in just a minute to hold on? What I will say is you're right now 
doesn't look like the future. Your right now doesn't look like yesterday. Mm. But your future is, regardless to what we want to say, is a product Mm. of your past. But it doesn't have to be a negative product of your past. If you start Mm. to understand the reasoning of your past, when you start to understand the common denominator of who Mm. helped orchestrate this, which is yourself, you start Mm. to understand that the reasoning for us needing God is because we're our own worst enemy. And when we're able to establish the understanding of that and see where our way went wrong time and time and time again, and we look in front of us and he says, he's our future. If we will but just Mm. turn from our way and accept Mm. his, then we, at that point, your today is definitely brighter in tomorrow. Your today is definitely brighter than your tomorrow. It, absolutely. It's, it's, so it's, it, it's and, been... and it will always take time. Redemption takes time. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm always, I'm ever reminded when Peter denied Christ, before Christ mm-hmm. asked him three times if he loved him, there's, there was time that had went past between these two accounts. So one has to have time to think about the things and the places <clears throat> that they have put themselves, but all the time have blamed God for. Mm-hmm. And when you start to see that he is better for you than what you've been to yourself, you can actually go to some places and, and your tomorrow, it, <clears throat> it will take time. But you, you yeah. don't have to worry about what people think of your past or what people uh, deny to believe in your change. Just keep doing the work. Mm. Keep doing the work. Thank you so much, Apostle, for sharing your life story. It's been inspirational. I have been blessed. I know that our viewers have also been blessed. And this book will reach out to many people. And they would also have their freedom from whatever they are going through. Thank you once again for sharing your life story all the way from Virginia, U.S. of A. God bless you. Viewers, you've been listening to the story of our dear Apostle Dr. Leonard Quentin Sampson. I know you have been blessed. He says something. He says, your tomorrow is definitely better than your today. So whatever you are going through, your tomorrow will be better than your today if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Whatever you are going through now does not matter. Your future with the Lord matters a lot. I hope you have been blessed by this life story. I want to leave you with this. Whatever you are going through, working for the Lord, whether in church or wherever you are, don't look back. If church folks, they are doing things that are dampening your spirit, Just go forward. Look up to God. Don't look back. Don't say that I'm leaving this church. I'm going. You cannot leave the presence of God. Hold on to whatever you are doing for the Lord. And at the end of it, you will be vindicated. I have gone through before. And an apostle is also saying that he went through. I know you are also going through one thing or the other doing the work of the Lord. But hold on so strong. Don't give up. The Lord will surely prove himself in your life. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, TBL TV. Like, comment, and share. You will never be the same. Like our Instagram and Facebook pages, TBL TV. Comment and share to friends, families, and loved ones, and they will be blessed. 
whatever you are doing for the Lord, don't stop. Give your best and give your all, for it will pay off. I hope you have been blessed by this episode. See you same time next week. Bye-bye.